uh, students this is lecture number 40 and this is the last uh, lecture on the game theory as well as the last lecture of this course. So, in this lecture we will study some examples uh, and also at the end of this lecture I will give you a quiz for your self assessment. So, let us begin here we have a first example uh, which says that Ram and Raja play a game as follows. They simultaneously and independently write one of the three numerals 1, 2 and 3 and if the sum of these numbers uh, written is even then Raja pays to Ram this sum in terms of rupees and if this sum is odd then Ram pays the sum to Raja in terms of rupees. So, we are required to formulate this problem as a matrix game for the first player that is Ram and solve it. So, as you know this is a very simple uh, 2 by 2 uh, game and this is the way we can write its payoff matrix. So, on the left we have the Ram that is the first player who is the winning player and on the top we have Raja who is the losing player and Ram has to select the three numbers 1, 2, 3 <coughs> and similarly Raja has to select 1, 2, 3. Now, according to the conditions uh, if uh, the sum of 1 and 1 is uh, even then Ram has then Raja has to pay Ram. So, that wise that is why its entry should be 1. If it is odd then it has to be minus 1. So, that is the way we can write the entire payoff matrix 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1. And as you can see this is a simple 3 by 3 matrix, but uh, we can use the principle principles of the dominance that we have learnt uh, and we can see that since two of the rows the uh, first row and the last row and similarly the first column and the last column they are identical. So, we can delete them and therefore, we can reduce this game into a simple 2 by 2 uh, matrix game uh, where the payoff matrix is 1, 1, 1 and minus 1. Sorry, this should be minus 1. So, this is the first player Ram and this is the second player Raja. Accordingly, we can write the probabilities that is P1 and P2 on the last column uh, and similarly the uh, probabilities for the strategies of the second player Q1 and Q2. Uh, you know that P1 plus P2 should be equal to 1 and uh, also minus P1 plus P2 uh, should be equal to P1 minus P2 that is the column sums which gives us that P1 should be equal to P2. And using P1 plus P2 is equal to 1 and P1 is equal to P2 using these two conditions uh, we can uh, deduce that both the values of P1 and P2 should be half. And similarly the same logic gives us that Q1 and Q2 should also be equal to half. And coming to the value of the game it is very easy to see that the value of the game is 0. So, now let us come to another very interesting example where in a small town there are only two stores let us say they are called as ABC and XYZ who sell sundry goods. The total number of customers is equally divided between the two because the price and the quality of goods sold are similar. Now, both the stores have good reputation in the community and they render 
equally good customer service. Assume that a gain of customers by ABC is a loss of XYZ and vice versa. Both stores plan to run annual pre Diwali sales during the first week of November. Sales are advertised through a local newspaper, radio and the television media. With the aid of an advertising firm, store ABC constructed the game metrics given below and the figure figures that are given in the metrics represent a gain or a loss of the customers. Now, this is the formulation of the uh, problem in terms of a rectangular game of on the first uh, player is the uh, strategy of the ABC store and the, the that is the winning uh, player and the second one that is a losing player is the XYZ and both of them have the two strategy the three strategies newspaper radio and television uh, and the payoff matrix is given as 30 40 minus 80 0 15 minus 20 90 uh, 20 and 50. Now, we have to determine the optimal strategies and the worth of such strategies for both the stores, stores ABC and XYZ. So, considering that both these stores are players and they are playing a rectangular game. So, let us use our knowledge of game theory to solve this problem. Now, first thing uh, that you need to do is uh, identify whether there is a saddle point or not. So, as you can see in the first row uh, we have 30, 40 and minus 80. So, the row minimum is minus 80 and in the second row we have 0, 15 and minus 20. So, row minimum is minus 20, third row 90, 20 and 50. So, row minimum is 20 and now from this uh, row minimum we have to select, select the uh, maximum. So, the max min is 20 this is max min and uh, likewise we will look at the columns. So, in the first column uh, the maximum of 30, 0 and 90 is 90, uh, maximum of 40, 15 and 20 is 40 maximum of minus 80, minus 20 and 50 is 50 and amongst this 90, 40 and 50 we have to choose the minimum. So, this one is the min max. Now, both of them are not equal. So, we know that 20 is not equal to 40. So, uh, this means that there is no uh, saddle point in this particular problem. So, therefore, we can apply the mixed strategies uh, that we have learnt and uh, the next step that we need to do is to check whether any row or column is dominating any other row or column or not. So, we will use the principles of uh, dominance that we have learnt. So, uh, let us look uh, at each entry of the first column. So, we find that each entry of the first column is greater than the corresponding entry of the third column. So, that means that uh, the store XYZ newspaper is a less attractive medium, newspaper is the first column. Okay. So, that means that newspaper is not a attractive medium. So, therefore, uh, as compared to the TV, uh, the television the newspaper is not an attractive uh, uh, medium of uh, advertisement. So, we can remove this. So, first column can be removed. So, that is what I have done. I have removed this first column and uh, on the same uh, logic. Now, let us see uh, what happens to the, uh, the rows and we find that uh, the radio uh, is not a good strategy for the uh, ABC player that the ABC uh, store. 
because each row in the second uh, pair of matrix each in the second row each entry entry of the second row is less than the corresponding entry in the third row. So, this means that we can strike off this particular row because uh, this radio is not a attractive uh, advertisement medium for the uh, second player first player. So, we using the principles of uh, dominance we have reduced our 3 by 3 payoff matrix into a 2 by 2 payoff matrix. Now, this is what the payoff matrix looks like 40 minus 80 20 and 50 and you can verify that this particular 2 by 2 payoff matrix also does not have a saddle point there is no saddle point to this uh, game. Let us just verify this because the row minimum is minus 80 for the first case and for the second case it is 20 and the max min is 20 that is our max min and on the other hand the uh, column maximum column maximum is 40 and here it is 50. So, therefore, the uh, min max turns out to be 40. So, this is our min max and 40 is not equal to 20 and you will observe that this 40 and 20 is actually the same that we had in the original matrix. So, as I also told you a result that the uh, rules of dominance that is the principles of dominance they do not affect the value of the game they do not affect the uh, saddle point of the game and so on. So, therefore, we have verified this result as far as the reduced uh, matrix is concerned. So, now let us try to solve this game. So, therefore, we will assume uh, the probabilities uh, P 1 and P 2 for the first player and similarly Q 1 and Q 2 for the second player and we will write uh, the for the store A B C uh, we have assumed that P 1 and P 2 are the probabilities of selecting the strategies newspaper and TV. So, for the A B C player there are only two strategies remaining that is the newspaper and TV because radio has been deleted. Then the expected gain to the store A B C when the store X Y Z uses its radio and TV strategy is given by 40 P 1 plus 20 P 2. Why did this come from where did this come? This came from the first column look at this first column. So, 40 P 1 plus 20 P 2 40 P 1 plus 20 P 2 and similarly for the second column minus 80 P 1 plus 50 P 2. So, therefore, uh, both these strategies should be uh, equated and uh, we should also use the condition that P 1 and P 2 should be uh, their sum should be equal to 1. So, we will substitute uh, this condition that uh, P 2 is equal to 1 minus P 1 from here P 2 is equal to 1 minus P 1 and substitute in this equation. And when we do this we will get the value of P 1 as 1 by 5 and P 2 as 4 by 5. So, these are the strategies P 1 and P 2 corresponding to the first player that is the store A B C. Now, similarly uh, let us look at what happens for the store X Y Z. So, let Q 1 and Q 2 be the probabilities of selecting radio and TV because in this case after applying the principles of dominance uh, the, uh, the uh, newspaper uh, strategy has been deleted. Then the expected gain 
to the store XYZ when the store ABC uses its newspaper and TV strategies is given by 40 Q1 minus 80 Q2. How did this come? 40 Q1 minus 80 Q2, the first row. So, this is 40 Q1 minus 80 Q2 and similarly for the second row 20 Q1 plus 50 Q2, 20 Q1 plus 50 Q2. So, this is the second row and they should both be equated along with the condition that Q1 plus Q2 is equal to 1. Again from here we will use Q2 is equal to 1 minus Q1 and substitute in this equation and when we do that we get Q1 is equal to 13 by 15 and Q2 is equal to 2 by 15. So, therefore, uh, we have concluded that these are the two strategies. Now, coming to the expected gain uh, for the store ABC, we have uh, the value of the game has to be calculated like this 40 P1 plus 20 P2. Uh, you substitute the value of P1 and P2 and you should get 24. Alternatively, uh, if you substitute in the second condition then also you should get 24. You remember you have to do it either of them and they will give you the same results. And also coming to the uh, XYZ uh, store, there also if you substitute uh, 40 Q1 minus 80 Q2. Uh, the value of q1 and q2 is 13 by 15 and 2 by 15. There also the value of the game will come out to be 24 no matter uh, which one you use. So, both are identical, both are equally applicable. So, the expected uh, gain to ABC is the expected loss to the XYZ store. So, I hope this simple example has helped you to understand the uh, theory that we have learnt. So, now we will bring back the original 3 by 3 payoff game and we will substitute uh, 0 value in the first place for the ABC store. Now, this is because we had deleted the first column right for the uh, ABC store and similarly uh, we had deleted the second row. So, because of this region reason we have a 0 entry uh, for the first place uh, corresponding to the strategies optimum strategies of the player ABC and similarly for the uh, store XYZ we have the 0 entry at the second place. So, that is the reason why because we had deleted this uh, first uh, column and the second row uh, using the rules of the dominance. Also the value of the game is 24, why is this 24? We have just now calculated here in the previous slide. So, with this we completely uh, solve this game. Now, alternatively let us try to solve the same problem by the linear programming approach. The data is as before uh, 30, 40, minus 80, 0, 15, minus 20, 90, 20 and 50. Now, as you remember we will uh, model this problem as a linear programming problem. So, first thing is we need to check whether there is a saddle point or not, we have already done this. So, we see that 20 is not equal to 40. So, there is no saddle point and therefore, we can use the mixed strategies and formulate the linear programming problem. Now, we will write down the probabilities P1, P2, P3 for a, the ABC store and Q1, Q2, Q3 for the uh, store XYZ. Uh, of course, you can uh, use the rules of dominance here also, but uh, just to illustrate, I have not used the rules of dominance uh, for this analysis. 
So, let p i from i is equal to 1 to 3 and q i is i is equal to 1 to 3 be the probabilities of selecting the strategies of a, b, c and x, y, z and uh, the expected gain for the first store a, b, c is 30 p 1 plus 90 p 3 greater than or equal to v where v is the value of the game. How did this come? Look at the first column 30 0 90. So, 30 0 90 tells us that 30 p 1 plus 90 p 3 should be greater than or equal to v where v is the value of the game. And uh, likewise we have the second uh, constraint that is 40 p 1 15 p 2 20 p 3 greater than or equal to v. This is the second column 40, 15 and 20. Similarly, the third constraint minus 80 p 1 minus 20 p 2 plus 50 p 3 greater than or equal to v. This is corresponding to the third column minus 80 minus 20 50. Of course, we must not forget that p 1 plus p 2 plus p 3 should be equal to 1 and they should be all greater than or equal to 0. Now, remember that in order to solve this problem using the LP approach, we make the following substitution. Let x1 is equal to p1 divided by v, x2 is equal to p2 divided by v and x3 is equal to p3 divided by v. Therefore, the problem for the store a, b, c becomes minimize z p which is equal to 1 upon v is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 subject to the constraints 30 x 1 plus 90 x 3 greater than or equal to 1. Similarly, 40 x 1 plus 15 x 2 plus 20 x 3 greater than or equal to 1 minus 80 x 1 minus 20 x 2 plus 50 x 3 greater than or equal to 1 and of course, x 1 plus x 1 and x 2 and x 3 they should be all greater than or equal to 0. Now, if you compare this problem with the previous one, uh, you will find that p 1 plus p 2 plus p 3 is equal to 1 need not be added here because this will be automatically satisfied. Right. Now, uh, on the same uh, logic, we can write the problem for the store x, y, z which turns out to be maximize uh, z q is equal to 1 by v which is equal to v y 1 plus y 2 plus y 3 and this is subject to 30 y 1 plus 40 y 2 minus 80 y 3 less than or equal to 1. Remember that both these problems that is the problem corresponding to a, b, c and the problem corresponding to x, y, z they are the dual of the each other. So, look at this uh, previous one it was minimization with greater than equal to constraints uh, and for the x y z it is maximization with less than equal to constraints and the a i j matrix corresponding to the decision variables they are becoming the transpose. Remember we have learnt this is the way the dual works. So, now uh, for the store x y z we have the dual which is uh, in terms of y 1, y 2, y 3. Of course, we have not to forget that the substitution that we have made is that y 1 is equal to q 1 upon v, y 2 is equal to q 2 upon v and similarly y 3 is equal to q 3 upon v. So, the problem of the store uh, x, y, z uh, we will solve this. Uh, remember that since the primal and the dual their uh, solutions can be derived from the optimum solutions one from the other. So, um, it is convenient to solve this uh, problem corresponding to the store x y z because the constraints are of the less than equal to type. If we solve the uh, previous uh, problem that is uh, the problem corresponding to uh, a b c then it is going to be difficult because there the dual will have the greater than or equal to constraints and therefore, uh, it is difficult to solve the greater than or equal to constraints because in each constraint you need to subtract a variable 
and then you have to uh, use the big M and the two phase method by adding some artificial variables. But uh, less than equal to constraints are easy to handle because you just need to add some slack variables. So, that is what we are doing here we will solve this problem for x y z and whatever solution we will get from the optimum table we will try to uh, deduce the solution of the primal. So, we have added s 1 s 2 s 3 into the 3 equations and uh, tabulated this information in our initial table. You can see uh, the basis is s 1 s 2 s 3 we have y 1 y 2 y 3 s 1 s 2 s 3 and the right hand side. And then we calculate the deviation row uh, we find that there is a tie uh, 1 1 1. Uh, so, we will use the first index. So, that means 90 is our pivot which is being highlighted in this cell in this table and using this 90 uh, as a pivot we will compute the table number 2 this is the table number 2 and again we will calculate the deviation entries and uh, we find that uh, 100 upon 3 is the pivot. Similarly, the table number 3 uh, again we find that uh, 6 by 5 is the pivot and uh, the optimum table you find over here the optimum table is given in table number 4 uh, because here the all the entries in the deviation row are 0 or negative which indicates that uh, the optimum uh, condition the, uh, has been the stopping criteria has been satisfied and therefore, we should uh, um, uh, stop here. Now, the solution we get over here is that uh, now this optimum table tells us the solution of this problem as well as its dual. So, the solution is y 1 is equal to 0, y 2 is equal to 13 upon 360 and y uh, 3 is equal to 1 upon 180. So, the solution of the x y z problem is uh, y 1 is equal to 0, y 2 is equal to 13 upon 260 uh, and y 3 is equal to 1 upon 180. I am sorry this is a this should be 360 that is a typing mistake and of course, the expected value of the game is z which is given by 1 upon v which is equal to 1 upon 24. So, therefore, we will uh, convert this information back into our terms of q 1 q 2 because remember q 1 q 2 q 3 are our original variables we have made this substitution y 1 is equal to q 1 upon v. So, this tells me that q 1 should be equal to y 1 times v which gives me 0 and similarly q 2 is equal to y 2 times v which is 13 upon 360 multiplied by 24 which gives me 13 upon 15 and q 3 is y 3 times v which is uh, 180 by 20 multiplied by 24 uh, 1 upon 180 multiplied by 24 which gives me 2 upon 15. And the strategies for the x y z store turn out to be 0 comma 13 upon 15 comma 2 upon 15. Remember this 0 has come from y 1 is equal to 0 over here. If we had used the rules of the dominance then uh, automatically this would have been removed, but anyway since we have not used the rules of the dominance because the rules of the dominance are optional. So, that is why I have uh, shown the working of this problem without applying the rules of the dominance. Now, coming to the optimum strategies for the store A B C uh, we can uh, compute the I mean we can observe the values uh, of this problem from the optimum table of the simplex calculations that we have got. So, what do we find we find from this last table uh, this is what we have we have the optimum table as this one and we find that the uh, solution for the dual is 
shown here. x1 is equal to 1 upon 120, x2 is equal to 0 and x3 is equal to 1 upon 30. 1 upon 120 and 1 upon 130 and of course, x2 is 0. So, therefore, we will convert back to the original variables that is p1, p2, p3 using the same conditions and we have p1 is equal to uh, x1 times v which is 1 upon 120 times 24 which gives us 1 upon 5 and similarly, p2 is 0 and p3 is 1 upon 30 times 24 which is 4 by 5. So, the probabilities of using strategies by both the players uh, that is the stores a b c is 1 by 5 comma 0 comma 4 by 5 and the store x y z is equal to 0 comma 13 by 15 and 2 comma 15 and the value of the game is 24. You can verify that this uh, solution this result is uh, the same what we had got using the uh, previous uh, approach. So, the same question I have solved using both the approaches. So, now is the time for the quiz. So, please open your copies and write down the answers to these uh, quiz questions and then later on I will give you the answers also. So, the first question is in a two person zero sum game value of the game is always 0 true or false. In a two person zero sum game value of the game is always 0 true or false. Question number 2 in a two person zero sum game gains of one player are equal to the losses of the other player true or false. Question number 2 in a two person zero sum game gains of one player are equal to the losses of the other player true or false. Question number 3 every matrix game has a saddle point true or false every matrix game has a saddle point true or false. Question number 4 use of the concept of dominance in reducing the size of a matrix game may lead to the loss of the saddle point true or false. Use of the concept of dominance in reducing the size of a matrix game may lead to the loss of the saddle point true or false. Question number 5 mixed strategies are only used when a matrix game has no saddle point true or false. Mixed strategies are only used when a matrix game has no saddle point true or false. Question number 6 graphical method can be used to solve a 4 by 2 game true or false. Graphical method can be used to solve a 4 by 2 game true or false. Every matrix game can be transformed into a LP problem true or false. Every matrix game can be transformed into a LP problem true or false. Question number 8 matrix game is the same as a rectangular game true or false. Matrix game 
is the same as a rectangular game true or false question number 9 the lp problem of the second player can be solved by the dual simplex method true or false the lp problem of the second player can be solved by the dual simplex method true or false question number 10 a game is said to be a dash if the lower that is the maximum and the upper that is the minimum values of the game are equal and both equal 0. A game is said to be a dash if the lower maximum and upper minimum values of the game are equal and both equal 0. Question number 11. A game is said to be a dash if the lower maximum and upper min max values of the game are equal and both equal the value of the game. A game is said to be a dash if the lower that is maximum and upper that is minimax values of the game are equal and both equal to the value of the game. Question number 12. The principles of dominance are applicable when the payoff matrix is a profit matrix for the player dash and a loss matrix for the player dash. The rules or principles of dominance are applicable when the payoff matrix is a payoff matrix is a profit matrix for the player dash and a loss matrix for the player dash. Question number 13. Reduction in the size of the game using the principles of dominance does not change the character of the game. True or false? Reduction in the size of the game using principles of dominance does not change the character of the game. Question number 14. LP for player B is the dual of LP for the player A and vice versa. True or false? LP for player B is the dual of LP for player A and vice versa. True or false? Question number 15. To take care of the negative elements in the payoff table, we have to do dash. To take care of the negative elements in the payoff table, the procedure that has to be adopted is dash. So, I hope you have uh, written the answers in your notebooks. Now, let us uh, look at the answers to these questions. So, the question number 1 the answer is false in a 2 player 0 sum game value of the game is always 0 is false. Question number 2 in a 2 person 0 sum game gains of one player are equal to the losses of the other player that is answer is true. Question number 3 Every matrix game has a saddle point, false. Question number 4, use of the concept of dominance in reducing the size of a matrix game may lead to the loss of the saddle point, false. Question number 5, mixed strategies are only used when a matrix game has no saddle point. True. Question number 6. Graphical method can be used to solve a 4 by 2 game. True. Question number 7. Every matrix game 
can be transformed into a LP problem. True. Question number 8. Matrix game is same as rectangular game. True. Question number 9. The LP problem of second player can be solved by the dual simplex method. False. Question number 10. A game is said to be a fair game if the lower that is maximum and the upper that is min max values of the game are equal and both equal to 0. A game is said to be strictly determinable if the lower that is max min and upper that is min max values of the game are equal and both equal to the value of the game. Question number 12. The rules or the principles of dominance are applicable when the payoff matrix is a profit matrix for the first player that is player A and has a loss matrix for the second player that is player B. Question number 13. Reduction in the size of the game using the principle of dominance does not change the character of the game. True. Question number 14. If the player B is the dual of LP for the player A and vice versa. True. Question number 15. To take care of the negative elements in the payoff table, add a constant to every element in the payoff table so as to make the smallest element 0. The solution to this new game will give an optimal mixed strategy for the original game, but the value of the original game equals to the value of the new game uh, minus that constant. So, with this we come to an end of this lecture as well as this course. I hope you have enjoyed and benefit, benefited from uh, listening to this course. Thank you very much.